A dangerous tornado outbreak looks likely as we head throughout the next 48 hours, and I'm becoming increasingly concerned about nighttime tornadoes. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you up to date on the threats as we see them come down. And this is going to be an active couple of days here with that high risk for severe weather today, transitioning over to a high risk for severe weather tomorrow. The orange here in an area that could have large and violent tornadoes that we need to stay dialed in on. Folks, this is an update that I want you to to share with your friends and family. And please, if you don't already, please subscribe to this channel, follow this channel wherever you're watching from right now. Any kind of watch, any kind of warning as we're tracking these storms moving forward, we're gonna be dialed in on. And what that looks like for you may be a little bit different. Let me map that out here for you because if you're watching right now on Facebook, for example, just make sure you're subscribing or following to updates, okay? If you follow the page, you'll get all the different updates there. If it's YouTube, you'll be able to see it a little bit differently as well. And anytime that you have those notifications turned on, it'll send a push alert to your phone. Another way to stay safe is to have the WYFF4 mobile app downloaded. Any kind of warning that is issued, if you're in bed, if you're out on the go, uh, you can watch what we're doing on TV on your phone. All right, so what's happening today is a high risk for severe weather is going to develop back toward the north and west tonight. Uh, it's going to be really this evening into the overnight hours for West Tennessee, back through Illinois, Missouri, this area under the high risk for tornadoes. As we go into tomorrow, that threat shifts into the southeast, and the tornado parameters that I'm seeing, unfortunately, here are literally off of our charts. They're, they're, they're breaking our color-coded legend, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But from Louisiana to Mississippi to Alabama, um, large, violent tornadoes. It's been several years since we've seen these kind of dynamics in the atmosphere that are taking shape. And when I specifically look at the tornado threat, there's two things to look at here. The hatched area is the most significant part. What that means is that there's a high chance for significant severe weather. And what that means, that significant terminology, means EF2 or greater tornadoes or wind that is in excess of 74 miles per hour very dangerous situation here. And that's possible from the western parts of the upstate into western North Carolina through metro Atlanta. And that yellow area means there's a one in 10 shot at any given spot that there could be an EF2 or greater tornado. One in 10 shot, folks. That's that's a high probability of a tornado at any given spot. Then you look at the red area, that's a 15% chance of a tornado at any given spot. Those are high odds. And when you look specifically at the wind, it's even more dire. There's a 30% chance, a 3 in 10 shot of 74 mile per hour winds or greater in that area. In the pink area, there is a 45% chance of 74 mile per hour winds or more. Uh, just some of the highest severe threats what we've seen in a while. Let me show you the makings of it. The dip in the jet stream is occurring right now, and you see this out here. That is the, the moisture streaming in and will continue to stream in, especially once it taps into the Gulf. Now, that threat is, is certainly very, very high today uh, into tonight up here. But I'm even more concerned about what happens here when you tap into the warm Gulf waters, and that brings in that jet. And what I'm seeing here from our models is that this dip, you see it here, it's a violent dip in the jet stream, uh, is going to cause a response here from the Gulf of Mexico that you can see right here on this map a little bit closer. Let me get into Saturday afternoon. Look at this. That is straight open for business. This means the air just above our heads is hauling. 70, 80, 100, 150 miles per hour, and that creates rotation in the atmosphere. That happens here, and then it shifts off toward the east as we go into the, this is 2 a.m. time frame. So you always look for the, the, the jet and where it's located, and the fact that it's right over us in Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and the Carolinas spells trouble for not only tornadoes, but the potential for nighttime tornadoes. All right, so when we look at this, folks, uh, you need to be dialed in on the fact that you need to have a way to receive warnings, because if a warning is issued for your town, uh, that means that the tornado is imminent. And the fact is here that it could be while many are trying to sleep. It's very possible you'll need to have one person stay awake in your home in order to be able to receive those warnings. Uh, that way you can get you and your family to safety. Now that comes with some preparation. How do you prepare for that? Well, you need to have your designated place planned out. Just a little family meeting today. If we get a warning, here's where we're going. If you have little ones like I do, it'd be good to have some blankets, some pillows in there because if you're waking them up at three or four o'clock, you hope they go back to sleep in your closet or your bathroom, wherever it is. Have some tablets, have some games, have a color 
recovering book, whatever it might be, just prepare that area so that it's not, you know, in a scary situation, it's a little more comfortable, all right? Let me show you the very latest model. This just came out, uh, gives us some brand new timing. Look at the supercells that develop later tonight. This would be 10 p.m. tonight across Mississippi, Tennessee, into Missouri, and Illinois. Each one of these could be strong tornadoes. Now, this is a two-pronged threat. This is a tonight threat in Mississippi and Alabama, then round two tomorrow, what we call a double barrel threat. It's two threats back to back, unusual to say the least. This is 2 a.m. tonight. Nighttime tornadoes possible in Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi. For the Western Carolinas, no threat, all right? It's tomorrow night. This continues into Saturday, whereby, you know, 6, 7 a.m., there could be some rain in East Tennessee. And normally I'd say, whew, that's gonna squash our threat. Well, not in a situation like this where you have that jet right over you sending in a lot of that energy and moisture. Here we are at 8 a.m. There could be some severe weather ongoing in northern Alabama, northern Georgia. That starts to fade. We get some heavy rain in parts of western North Carolina. Again, I'd say, ah, that's going to squash the threat. Well, not on a day like this. We kind of recover from that. Northern parts of the upstate, maybe some rain in the afternoon and evening, but the big deal is back here toward the west. North Alabama, north Mississippi, this is the big bad stuff. In this area, what we'll likely have form is large tornadoes that'll be long track, where they go county by county, state by state even. We could have tornadoes on the ground for two states. That's unfortunately the situation that I'm seeing here. And unfortunately, as we see this map out into the afternoon, it could be during the nighttime hours. This is a scary situation. You got a line here at 4 p.m., they would indicate in anywhere in this line could be tornadic activity, but out ahead of that, that is a that is a telltale sign of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plus supercell tor tornadoes that are out discreet. They're by themselves. They're spinning in that atmosphere. So where do they go? Is the question. This tries to move on out. This is 6 p.m. on Saturday. Most of Mississippi and Alabama either under a tornado warning at some point. I mean, I mean, this is going to be a bad, bad day tomorrow. This continues into the evening hours. Here we are at 8 p.m. This does not matter. Normally, I'd say nighttime, ah, threat's going lower, the jet's cranking. It's, just, it's like a hot summer's day outside. It's muggy, you feel it, it just feels different. Birmingham south, most of Alabama, even the panhandle of Florida under, under some supercells here. This looks like an outbreak that we haven't had in a few years, folks. Um, you know, you, you you hate to compare it to certain years, and I won't do that, but I haven't seen this kind of an outbreak in Alabama and Mississippi and, and, and even into Georgia in many, many years. So that threat continues to shift toward the east. Midnight, here we are with it entering Georgia from Alabama. It's a, it's a race against time. How long can these supercells sustain themselves? You'll have a warning, then it'll go county by county by county, and it will likely continue into the Atlanta metro area. Here we are, 1 a.m., it's approaching metro Atlanta. 2 a.m., you know, southwestern parts of western North Carolina, for those of you in the WIFF4 viewing area here, we may start to get in on some warnings there at 1, 2 a.m., uh, but it's really 2, 3, 4 a.m. Here we are at 4 a.m. This is moving into northeast Georgia. This is moving into Oconee County, Clemson, Seneca, Greenville, Anderson. Uh, in fact, we can zoom in. Let's do that real quick. Here we are at 4 a.m. So let me just back this up. Here's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. This is starting to move in. You know, that's a supercell. That's a supercell. That's possibly a supercell embedded in this line. And then here we are at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. You got some squirrelies in, in, in embedded in here. Then it's moving over toward Columbia. The backside of this, 8 a.m., we're done. I mean, this is... This is really a, a time frame of that. Now, folks, I'm going to show you a dire map here, okay? This is the tornado program. I'm going to zoom in to states here in just a moment, but um, look at it broadly first. Tonight, that risk, I mean, this is a scale, I'll show you, goes to 10, but you see my max is 15 on here. It broke my legend. I mean, that's that's I, I haven't seen that. <laughs> 
if I'm being honest with you here. This is the HRRR, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh. Parts of Missouri, Arkansas, West Tennessee, we're talking a two and a three tornado parameter would be, ew, that's, that's pretty high. But we got 10, 11, 12s, and that's tonight. All right, that continues, and then it kind of wanes. And then notice the, the buildup down here toward the Gulf. That's what I'm telling you. The Gulf's now open for business. And then as we go into the day on Saturday, this is 8 a.m., so we're starting off the day uh, with already high numbers, and look at this. Here we are at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. We got 12s, 14s, um, just numbers that, that we haven't seen in years. Here we are at 5 p.m., North Alabama, Southern Mississippi. This is kind of turning into a line, kind of slanted like that. This continues, 10s right there through Central Alabama. Let's go to Georgia. I mean, we're still cranking out here. Let me zoom in here. Bear with me. We'll zoom in now that it's in the Carolinas and Georgia. Here we are at 1 a.m. Atlanta Metro sitting at fours and fives. You got an eight in there in Atlanta Metro at, at 3 a.m. Here we are going to the upstate. You got twos, threes, and fours. Now, like I mentioned, the ingredients aren't as high locally as they are back to the West. So it's going to be a matter of, is this weakening as it approaches um, kind of thing. All right, let's look at the updraft helicity tracks. Folks, this is a, a map that I have to educate you on for a second because this doesn't exactly guarantee where a tornado is going to be, but it tells me where rotating thunderstorms are going to be. And if I see a lot of them that are intense, that tells me there, there could be a swarm of tornadoes. And I want you to see this as we map out today. Look at the swarm of tornadoes that could be possible and the long track nature of them. This would be a tornado, an example of this model that would touch down in Louisiana. It would lift in Alabama. Long track significant damaging tornadoes here. Uh, folks, again, haven't seen these kind of parameters in years for this part of the country. Now that's Friday night into Saturday morning. Let's continue this out a little bit more. Here we go into Saturday's time frame. Look at that, folks. I mean, that that's scary. You got some areas that could get hit with tornadoes back to back. Notice the colors. There's day one. Day two, similar areas get it again. And that adds in parts of the upstate, the Atlanta area, Western North Carolina with these tracks as it moves on through. Now I'm gonna zoom back in here to the Carolinas. You can see some of these that, that hold together from, from Georgia. Now, again, this doesn't tell you exactly where, so that line right there could just as well be right here or right here. I mean. Any number of these long track supercells could touch down and stay on the ground, pop down, pop up, pop down, pop up. So needless to say, this is going to be a long, a long night for us. Uh, and it looks like these enter the picture around 2 a.m. Here's two, three, four, five. So I think our worst of our weather, unfortunately, is in the dead of the night. All right, how about wind gusts? Uh, we know that's gonna be up. The winds are gonna be cranking. This would be not assuming you get a thunderstorm. This would just be winds with the system, 50 plus miles per hour. Now, if you get a storm, those are going to be, as we know, 70, 80 miles per hour or more. So again, folks, the risk here is high for tornadic activity. The risk here is high for nighttime tornadoes. And the best way that you could stay informed is to have a way to receive those warnings. And honestly, you know, have somebody stay awake, especially, you know, if you're in these areas. Now, anybody that's in a risk, we, we had a risk uh, two weeks ago that was that was in this yellow color here, maybe even in the low category. An EF2 formed and, 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 and two people lost their life in Tennessee. I mean, you anywhere in these risks have a chance for tornado, but especially in this yellow and especially in this orange, most definitely in the red, you need to have somebody stay awake that's going to be able to receive those warnings, wake the family up, get into an interior part of your home. And folks, it goes with with some some preparation here. If, if you have a, a well-built home, um, you know, stay at home if you want. If you do not, if you're in a RV, a camper, a mobile home, it's worth the effort to go stay with a family member, a friend, or to go to a to a you know, 
a motel or a hotel. All right, that's that's probably going to be better than those situations, especially in those high risk areas. Uh, public storm shelters are, are common in parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Having a way to stay safe in this situation is going to be important. And having a way to stay informed. And the best way to do that here is if you don't already, please like this video, comment where you're watching from, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. I'm going to stay with you here through the storm. I'll have multiple updates throughout the rest of today. The new outlooks that come out, I'll share them with you here on this page. And then I'll also be live with you during the tornado outbreak, being able to provide an update on where the tornadoes are, where they're going, and even into the overnight hours. So uh, lock it in right here. A couple of things you can do on your phone prior. Make sure it's charged. Have a way to receive those warnings. Have a way to uh, be able to watch that coverage live if your power were to go out. The WIFF4 mobile app is great for that. You can watch whatever we'd be doing on TV on your mobile app if you're on the go or if you're in bed. All right. All right. So folks, stay safe. Stay tuned. This is not a time to panic, but a time to prepare. Uh, my goal as always is to inform you with the information you need to keep your family safe. And um, we'll continue to do that.